Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well we are out working on the phasers today and we are doing a little bit of a reliability upgrade and a little bit of a performance upgrade and also replacing a uh, stripped out uh, piece here all at the same time. So originally on these phasers, they're the same ones we've uh, covered in several other videos, originally the torsion spring adjusters looked like this right here. They had a soft, a medium, and a hard setting. The stock setting was medium. And to adjust them, you'd take a wrench and put it on this plastic nut right here, and you'd twist them to put the torsion spring on whichever side, soft, medium, or hard, was appropriate for your riding style. Well, the problem is these things were prone to breaking, and additionally, a lot of people also wanted a setting slightly higher than the high setting. So a gentleman that owns a business called Barn of Parts Sled Salvage out of Pennsylvania uh, invented these little gadgets right here. They look very similar as you can see, but there's several advantages to them. So you have soft, medium, hard, those are all three the stock settings, and then you have an extra setting over here which is a little bit harder than the standard hard setting. Then the other advantage to this is it's metal, and additionally, the adjustment nut is offset from the pivot point. So as you turn it around to the harder and harder setting, you have more and more of an advantage based on the position of the adjuster. So you have a little bit more leverage. Additionally, it seems that there's a right and a left hand version. I spoke to him on the phone, the gentleman that made these, and asked him about that. And he said, no, it really didn't matter. But I tried several different ways on the other machine, the one I did first before the video, and I came to find out that I think this one here is the right and this one here is the left and it works the best that way. But it seems like it would work either way, but it didn't really matter. This last side here is not used, even though it looks like it could be used, um, it is not used. There's no groove for the spring to go in there. So let's take a look at how these look on the machine and then we're gonna go ahead and show how to pull them off and swap these out. So this is how they're mounted right here. You can see currently it's on the highest setting. I was doing a little testing and playing around with this to see uh, the different advantages and disadvantages of higher and lower. So first of all, what we're gonna do here is we've got the machine up on the standard uh, hoist that I usually use in the shop. It's hooked up to the lower cord of the truss. And again, that's not the wisest idea of anything, but it can be done as long as you're careful. So we've got it hooked around the rear bumper. We're going to lift it up off of the uh, dolly that it's on in the back here. We've got the front on the carbide savers that we talked about in the other video. And we're going to go ahead and take the torsion spring pressure off. To do that, what we're going to do first off is we're going to take this device right here, this little rectangular plastic piece, flop it forward, which uncovers the top of the torsion spring. Then we're going to take a wrench on this and put it to soft. We're gonna jack the machine up in the air and we're gonna lift the torsion spring off here over this wheel and release it all the way down like this. And it's gonna have pressure on it till it's pointing pretty much at the floor. So you need to be prepared for that when you take it off. It has a lot of pressure on it. Once you get it to this point right here, pointing straight down, it will lift off of this cam right here. So I'm gonna to have to set the camera down to do that and then I'll come back with the camera. So right there is the point that you can see the pressure finally releases. And what you're going to do is lift it up like this, bring it around the adjuster, and then just lay it back up there out of the way. So what you're left with here is you have a snap ring. So we're going to take that off, and then this piece will just come right off. So there's what you have. There's the shaft sticking out, and we have the new piece right here just goes ahead and slides on just like that. One thing I kind of tinkered with a little bit was if you put it on the opposite side, it seems that this bolt on the back here, this bolt head would hit this wheel potentially. So that's why I opted to use it this direction. And according to the gentleman that built them, it really didn't matter, but I think this way seems to fit better. So additionally, after talking to him, um, he said just let this float in here. But one thing I got to thinking about is you're going to put a lot of pressure on this shaft and there's reports of some of these shafts breaking on other machines. So what I opted to do 
was I went over to the local hardware store and I got a stack of stainless steel washers. Same thickness if you measure from the back to the front here of the original Yamaha spacer. Stills allow, still allows a little bit of wiggle room in there. Still allows it to kind of float, but it's going to hold the pressure a little bit towards the back, which is going to be a little bit stronger because you're not out at the tip of that uh, shaft right there. So I've got the piece put on. We'll put the snap ring back on, and then we're going to load the torsion spring back on. So the snap ring's back on. I opted to put the crack in the snap ring to the back because that's the least likely to get caught on anything. Then what you'll do is you'll take the spring, bring it all the way back, and set it on position one, which is right there. And then we're gonna have to go ahead and load the torsion spring again. So I'm gonna have to set the camera down again, and we'll go ahead and do that. So there we are, it's loaded back on again. Then we'll go ahead, we'll flip the piece of plastic back up, which will cover the top of the spring in the front. We've got our washers on there, and we're all set to go. So now adjusting these, if you want to put it back to the original setting, I went ahead and sprayed just a little bit of lubricating oil around this just to make it a little more slippery, but you use a 13 millimeter socket on there. That's position one. There's position two. So that is the stock setting right there, which is where we're gonna leave this one. If you wanted to go to position three, which is the heavy setting for stock right there, and position four down there at the bottom if you wanted to flip it all the way around. Um, so far, I have not uh, ever on these normally used them on the high setting. I always use it on the medium setting. So I've always had good luck with that. So that's really all there is to it. We went ahead and we changed out this original here. We put the upgraded model on there. It's all aluminum. And so less chance of it breaking in the cold, less chance of it stripping, or less chance of it blowing apart in your hands and hurting somebody. And you also have that extra overload on there if you wanted to. So real happy with this product, real happy with the service that I got from the Barn Apart Sled Salvage and the gentleman uh, I spoke to on the phone there. He was real helpful and everything. So uh, real happy with this product so far. Um, we'll see how it goes this winter and we'll give it a good test. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember, you can't finish a project without getting started.